In this video, we're going to show you whether or not you should consolidate your student loans. First, we'll look at consolidating federal student loans. Then, we'll show you how to consolidate private student loans. Also, we'll do an online tutorial step-by-step -step to show you how to consolidate both federal and or private student loans. Why is this important? Because you could save thousands and thousands of dollars doing consolidation for student loans the right way. You can also cost yourself thousands of dollars doing this the wrong way. I'm Travis, founder of Student Loan Planner, and we've used these exact tactics with thousands of borrowers across the country with hundreds of millions of dollars in student loan debt. I'm confident that if you follow these steps, you'll avoid a lot of the mistakes that we see cost our clients a ton of money and even worse, a lot of their time. Let's get started. To consolidate your student loans, you have to figure out if you want to consolidate your federal or your private student loans, or both of them together. You can do all of them, but you need to know what you're talking about first. So the first step here is we're going to type in uh, studentaid.gov. So this is the new website in the federal system. And uh, studentaid.gov is going to look like this. And what you can do is go to manage loans. So you go to manage loans, and then there's a section called consolidate my loans. This is a recent change. They used to give a lot of different options for different websites that you could use, uh, but this is the one to use now. And so you'll click this login to start button, and this is only for federal student loans. This does not apply to private student loans. So what you're going to do is you're going to see the loans that you're able to consolidate. So we've got two loans here, an example, 30000 and 20000 so That's $50,000 total. Now, if you hover over this question mark box, it's going to give you the title of the loan. This one says direct subsidized loan. This one says direct unsubsidized loan. So you could consolidate both, or if you uncheck, you will see that the amount of your consolidation changes. So most people are going to want to consolidate everything they have. And for federal student loans, sometimes you might not have all of your loans listed. When this happens, it's usually because of the following reason. You might have a Perkins loan that may or may not be listed, an institutional loan basically, in other words, it's 5%. Or you might have some loans through the Department of Health and Human Services. These loans can be added to your consolidation, but you need to click this Add Loans button. And you'll have to find your account number, disbursement date, loan amount, interest rate, and your loan servicer. So most commonly, uh, there is a um, servicer called... Um, ECSI, Heartland ECSI, and you might need to give them a call to try to figure out uh, what is going on exactly and how to add this loan, okay? So when you find that information, you can add it on, and then you can consolidate everything that is federal with the federal government. So you'll be combining all of your loans into one loan, and then it will ask you for your um, grace period that you'll select, and so it'll also select your servicer selection, uh, this is asking you if you ever are, have been employed by a full-time public service organization or are you doing PSLF. So if you say yes, it's going to move you to Fed Loan Servicing. If you say no, then you're going to get to choose your loan servicer. And so we usually recommend Great Lakes Student Loan Servicing for people not pursuing the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. So repayment plan request. So you'll have to put in your adjusted gross income. So that's from your prior year tax return. So let's say you had a 40000 taxable income, you're single, and your family size is three because you have a couple kids, and we'll just leave it at Alabama. So you really can't trust these uh, monthly payments too much. We generally tell people that are going for loan forgiveness to do pay as you earn, and if you're not going for forgiveness to start with revised pay as you earn. And then you'll go choose the repayment plan, so you'll actually get a chance to select your payment plan, and you'll continue. Do you work for a not-for-profit organization? No. And then you'll select children and dependents and your married status. And then we'll say, uh, we'll say single. And if, you know, you do say married, if placed on the ICR plan, do you want to repay your loans jointly with your spouse? Always say no to that. I don't know why they even include this stupid question on the form anymore, but they do. So you click single, and then you will access your IRS information. So you will be uh, asked to link your IRS information, uh, did you file a tax return, has your income significantly decreased? So if your income increased, then the answer to this is no, right? Because your income did not significantly decrease, you'll be able to use your tax return. So, you know, usually you're going to link this to your IRS tax returns, uh, and if that fails, you can submit a paper copy to your loan servicer. A pre-filled application will be available, 
uh, on where to send your application and income documentations. Um, so, uh, and other, you know, a lot of people can just do all this online though. You don't necessarily need to, uh, you know, need to, to worry about doing the paper copy unless for whatever reason, the IRS info doesn't come through. And so what you can do besides just consolidating your federal student loans into one federal student loan, you can also do refinancing. So for refinancing, what this does is combine as many private and or federal loans that you want to combine into one loan with a new lender as you want. So these bonuses are always changing, but Student Loan Planner, unlike other companies, gives you a cash bonus in most cases, uh, which we negotiate because we take a lower commission than other big websites take when you click on their refinancing links. Refinancing student loans is really honestly a very profitable thing for a lot of websites, and we think that you should earn a cash bonus instead of having it all go to uh, the site itself. So you can apply this table at the top has most of the top lenders our readers use. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that there are a whole bunch of lenders listed. We have 12, sometimes 13, sometimes less, depending on what lenders are offering what rates. So you can click all of these links, in most cases get a cash bonus for doing so and applying and getting a rate that's better than what you currently have. And consolidation for um, for private refinancing is different in that you can combine any number of private student loans or federal student loans all into one. So that'll combine it into one place, one payment, and it's something that we recommend when you owe less than 1.5 times your income in student loan debt, uh, and then also you're working in the private sector and you're financially stable. So that's a good time to consolidate your private and federal student loans into one. For federal student loans, we generally recommend that as soon as somebody graduates to consolidate it with the government. And that's mostly for people who are not going to be pursuing any kind of refinancing um, at some point. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel for more updates that can save you money. Also, if you need a lot of resources for your giant student loan debt, check out studentloanplanner.com for more useful resources and tips to get you out of debt faster. Finally, if you have any questions about student loan consolidation, just pop them in the comments below.